Greetings, royal family. I'm back. Love and hip hop, honey. Miami. This was another good episode. I have to say they are thoroughly entertaining me. Thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, so we're on episode eight of season three. So we open up with Amara, you know, talking to her mother. Her mother's doing some gardening. Okay. Cause she can do it for herself. So they're just reminiscing and talking about the show from the previous episode. Her mother's just congratulating her, telling her she did such a great job. She's all excited. You know, Amara is excited also because she does not have a manager anymore, right? So she is proving to herself, okay, I can kind of do this on my own. Like I don't, I don't really need a manager. Amara, you are going to need a manager, sweetie. This was a very small show small venue and yes it was tight you had everything together but you're eventually going to need a manager sis and i think she knows that so anyway so amara tells her mother that she spoke to her father after the show and honey she pissed mama la negra off real quick okay that bang got to swinging she's like huh Ay? she was not here for it because she does not want amara to get hurt and of course, Mama La Negra is not feeling Amara's father, rightfully so. So she said that, you know, she talked to her father and then she mentions money. And I, I just put my head down and shook my head because Amara's father is ill. He has cancer. This is what he tells her. And he asked her for money. So Amara's like, you know, that's my father at the end of the day. He wants to make things right. You know, I can spend $5,000 on a Gucci bag and I, that means I can spend money on my father helping him. First of all, you work hard for that money, Amara, so you can spend it however you want. That's my, my whole thing. Whether you want to spend it on helping your father with his treatments, that's your choice. I understand where Mama La Negra is coming from, though. Now, I'm going to just say this. Her father is truly disgusting. I'm sorry. Um, I understand that he's ill. I get it. You know, um... I get it, but him being ill does not give him the right to use Amara because that's what he's doing. Ultimately, that's what he's doing. At least let Amara offer to help you. No, but you come straight out, haven't been around in years. You know, you, you never sent any money. You know, granted, you said that your papers weren't straight, but that doesn't prevent you from at least Western unioning, unioning some money to your child with a note or something, you know what I'm saying? So miss me with that excuse. Now you're ill and you have the audacity to ask your daughter to help you financially because of, you know, she's Amara La Negra, as, as, as her mother said. He's trash for that, sorry. You're bold, you're bold to ask, let her offer. Anyway, so Mama La Negra, like I said, she's not having it. Um, she said that he was lying about having his papers as an excuse. She said he was chilling in Puerto Rico while she was here struggling with raising Amara on her own by herself. And she's against it. She's against them having a relationship. Now, granted, Mama, you can't stop Amara from having a relationship with her father. You can't stop it. Yes, we know you're disgusted. I totally agree where she's coming from. Amara is caught in the middle now because she feels the right thing to do is to take care of her father. And he's guilting her. He probably is guilting her into doing this. And he's using the fact that she wants a relationship with him because that part of her life was missing. He's using that to his advantage. I don't care what anybody says. You can respectfully disagree. I think it's trash. Yes, you may need help, but I'm pretty sure there are a lot of social services that you can utilize for your treatments. Um, mm -mm. You didn't even let that girl ask to, to help you. At least that's not what she said anyway. It is what it is. So she feels stuck in the middle. And again, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that whole concept of children being obligated to help an absentee parent, but Hey, if she, that's what she chooses to do, it's her choice. Mama doesn't have to like it. And Amara, you are grown enough to make your own decisions, but mama usually knows best. So I get where both of them are coming from, but my opinion, that father is basuda trash. I'm bilingual sometimes. Moving along to Briscoe, Lord, you know, I started to like this guy, but he's really, it's just something about him that's like, ugh. So he's at the bowling alley with his son and um, his ex, 
who is also the mother of his of his sons. So this whole I'm trying to get my life back together campaign is just old. You know, um, he's just talking about what he wants. He wants to get he, 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 what he wants. What about what's best for the mother of your of your child? I don't know. Does he have is this the mother of both his boys or just his last boy? Whatever. His child's mother. What about what's best for her? And the children as well. It's all about you, you, you. You know, I did this. I, I went to jail. I, I want this. I'm going to get this family back together. I, I, I. You know what's good for your children? Brasco, Brisco, whatever your name is. I forgot that quick. Them seeing their mother and their father get along and have a healthy, functional relationship. It doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be an intimate, romantic relationship. And it's just like they don't need to see you trying to sell their mother a dream that I ain't going to cheat no more. That whole gimmick. Stability and consistency are vital for children's well-being. Bottom line. So I just I'm going to get this family back together. If you're not in a relationship with your ex, does that mean that the family is not together? I'm confused. Does he need a place to stay? Anyway. His ex doesn't seem like she's buying it, though, for now, anyway. She just seems like she's just keeping her cool, and she's not, you know, saying too much in front of the, uh, the, the child. And then he's like, I'm going to get family back together, right, son? Stop doing that, because what if the mother decides to not get back with you and not let you move back in with her? Then what? Moving along, we see Santana in the studio and the Ratchet Rangers come to visit them, visit him in the studio, two of them anyway. So they're still they're still planning on doing this tour because Santana did suggest, hey, look, Trina gave y'all the boot, but that doesn't mean that you guys can't do it on your own. So they're definitely taking this seriously. So they need to find a good road manager. OK, so they they're. They're on the hunt. They're trying to find a good road manager. So they're just chopping it up with Santana in the studio. Um, and he's planning a album release party for his mixtape. What is the difference between a mixtape and an album? Like what, what, when I was younger, mixtape was like a DJ Clue or a DJ SNS. You know what I'm saying? Had like mixes, like the songs were mixed to different songs and it was cut up and fast and a whole bunch of different songs. And DJ Clue was screaming all over the... The track, clue, clue. But what's now a mixtape is like a mini album or is it like an independent album? Let me know. Put it in the comments if you're privy to this information. Anyway, so he is planning an album or a mixtape release party. Uh, but he doesn't want uh, Miami Tip at the venue. <sighs> so basically, after Santana got hurt recently in Miami, um, Miami tip did a video that was all over social media saying that Santana caused his own injuries in a nutshell. That's it. You guys should be privy to what's, what was going on anyway. So keep in mind, Miami tip is a managing Suki. So Suki, she feels caught in the middle and she's trying to keep the peace between the two of them. Um, and she wants Santana to let tip come, you know, maybe she'll apologize, you know, so Suki's trying to keep the peace. So Santana says, all right, let her come. So at this point, I'm like, okay, we'll see if she, if she shows up and if she gets in, we shall see. We move on to Trick, Daddy, and Joy. <laughs> so Joy decides to take Trick to an aerobics class. So they're meeting up and Trick is like, come on, give me a hug, you know? No, no, give me a real hug, you know? <sighs> He's walking with a limp. We don't know what happened, you know what I'm saying? But he just looked like he don't want to be there. First of all, he's showing up to an aerobics class and he has on jeans. Is it me or Trick never follows the dress code? He just, Trick is just stand there and just be funny. He's so comical. So anyway, so they walk into the, the class and Trina's there also. So they're showing their support because they really want Trick to take care of himself. Joy, let Trick know, look, on last episode, look, you need to take your health seriously. This is not a joke. You really need to take this seriously. So I guess they're taking the initiative. Plus, Joy probably has nothing to do. So this was a great scene. And Trina ain't doing much of anything either. So this was this was a great scene. So again, Trina's there. Now, Trick said, <laughs> he makes me laugh every time. Trick said he hasn't worked out since he was in prison. Okay. 
And I don't know how long ago that was, but he is definitely out of shape. So he's in jeans. He's trying to jump on the trampoline. The instructor is trying to get them to do squats. He like, nah, nah, none of that. I ain't doing none of that. He can't even keep up. So that was a cute little, uh, little scene for comic relief. So we move on to see Amara and her baggage. Okay, so they walk into a pet store and he wants to buy a dog. Amara doesn't want a dog. He says he's not trying to pressure her into having kids, but in the meantime, he wants them to have a dog. He tells her that it's already paid for, so it's hers. Paid for with whose money, sir? Anywho, Amara, she caves in, and at this point, he slides in his little plan to become her manager. He tells her, you know, you need a manager until you get someone else. Didn't I tell y'all? Didn't I tell y'all? I told y'all that Amara has a manager, it's MJ, but she just don't know it yet. So Amara, she's hesitant. She's like, you know, she really doesn't want to mix business with pleasure, but let's see what she's going to do. So Amara said that uh, MJ has been in the business she didn't say doing what, and he's also an artist. Never heard of him, never heard of him. He probably is signed to Jojo Simmons' invisible record label that he has been building for years. Bye, just, just bye, MJ, goodbye. So we move on to the Hood Rangers and Miami Tip. They are so fun, aren't they? So they're holding interviews for a road manager. And Tip, you know, she's sitting in, she's trying to help. So I said to myself, this is gonna be good. So Suki says she wants a sexy man, the requirements for Suki, she wants a sexy manager that will keep Wings and Hennessy on deck. I, you know, she knows what she wants. So, <laughs> so the first applicant, um, Chardonnay, she can tap dance. That's all I got out of that. Looks like she had on tap shoes. So Suki Hana, or I think it was Chameleon, said, tap dance for me or something. So she, she tap danced. The second applicant is J-Rock. He said that he did a tour with Chris Brown and Drake. Sure. Um, at this point, Hood Brat, you know, she wants them to take the audition seriously because Suki is playing around. They're laughing, they're joking. And Hood Brat is not really joking and laughing. She's like, you know, she wants them to be respectful. She wants to take, wants them to take this seriously. So the third and final applicant, Jonathan, but he goes by JJ. He says that he don't want no divas. He wants stars. So JJ looks like a mafia boss. Okay. He came in a suit. He had on a red tie. He was giving me real, I don't know, like just scary, just scary vibes, you know? And, um, yeah, he looked like a mafia boss, but not in a good way. Not that there's a good way you can look like a mafia boss. Mm, it depends on who you ask. So he says he's been in the business for 20 years and they ask him, you know, um, who has he managed? And he says, you'll find that out when the moment is right. He was very bossy, like he was putting them in their place. So they, <laughs> they told him, bye, you know, <laughs> you know, they are so, I can't with them. They are, they, they too much, but they're innocent though. I love the hood rangers. So I don't know. He just looked like he would have the hood rangers tied up somewhere. So no, sir. So he's, you know, tip said, yeah, he's a little bit creepy. Now hood rat feels that they wasted their time after these three applicants. It was, it was a dud. It was just for, for comic relief. They were having fun, but hood rat, she feels that they wasted time and she is about her business. Like she's got a lot on the line. You know, we know her story and she is taking this seriously. So she's not interested in playing around. So I don't know. So Suki tells Tip about Santana, that they were recently in the studio. They met up with Santana and that Santana's party is coming up. And he said that she could come. This is what Suki is telling Tip. So Tip goes into saying that, you know, she shouldn't have to apologize for anything because she told her truth. That's what she, that's what she saw. Suki wants her to just like kind of apologize, smooth things over. So Tip is like, no, she was speaking facts based on what she witnessed because she was there, but she did agree to apologize just to keep the peace. So I said, okay, this should be good. So now we move on. It's party time, time to move and shake. So Santana's party is underway. Okay. Santana sachets in the venue, you know, like he owns the place. Now, Amara and Prima Donna, they were also there among others. Of course, Suki was there. So there was a couple of other people sprinkled about. Now, Amara, they're sitting, she's sitting at the bar with Prima Donna. 
And she's talking about MJ, you know, wanting to be her manager. Um, Amara says, you know, it's good to kind of like get out by myself because it's just always them two. And she kind of needs a break. And he always wants to talk about business, business, business. And she's just spilling her guts to Prima Donna. And Prima Donna's giving her some sound advice. You know, she's married. She has kids. So she's just telling her that, you know, it's good to keep the two separated. And, you know, you got to focus on your career, yada, yada. Now, it was at this moment that I said to myself, what does Prima Donna know about MJ that she's not saying? Hmm. Stay tuned. Alvin approaches the Ratchet Rangers. Okay, remember, Alvin is Trina's former assistant. He is the current uh, manager, kitchen manager, I guess, at Sundays, which is Trey's restaurant. So he approaches the Ratchet Rangers about being their road manager. So he is basically selling it. He's like, you know, I know about styling. You know, I know about this. I know about that hair, makeup, all this other stuff. You know, I, I used to work for Trina. So they like, don't you work at Sundays? He was like, yes, I manage. I manage in the kitchen. But you know, he's, <laughs> he's just like a walking resume. He's trying to read off his resume to the girls. And honey, I hope that they don't, uh, good luck with that. If they sign him up or give him the job as road manager, which they will because he's on the show and it'll create good, you know, scenes and storylines. Good luck with that. That is all I have to say. So they tell him, you know, we'll let you know. So he, he walks off. So Tip is approaching the club, okay, where Santana's party is taking place. And there is a huge sign outside with Tip's picture. <laughs> and it says, no trespassing. So she's trying to get past the um, secure that little one security guard that's out there in this em halfway empty venue. No shade. I'm just saying. And she's calling for Suki. Suki comes out. And Suki's like, uh-uh, because y'all not going to do my good sis like this. What's going on? So Suki goes to Santana and she confronts him. And he doesn't care. He could care less. He was like, oh, well, the club says no trespassing. <laughs> Then while I'm laughing and like being entertained by Suki and, and uh, Santana's back and forth, Scam Likely number two walks up. Ugh, Shay. She walks up. She's outside. So Tip is outside. She's talking to Shay and Amara. And then she ends up leaving. So that was funny, though. Uh, Santana said, oh, well, you know, it is what it is and, and proceeds to sip his drink and, and enjoys himself. So we move on to Trick Daddy's house. I, I like this scene. So he's having like a little backyard barbecue. And those, listen, those kebabs look good. He's on the grill. He's on the grill out back. Food looking good. So Briscoe shows up. You see Chaotic, who we haven't seen really all season. I liked Chaotic. Chaotic was cool. He was there. And Trick's other friends was there. So they got a little domino game going on. Trick is on the grill. Just some good, good vibes. You know what I'm saying? Good vibes. Now listen here. Trick done told y'all he don't want to talk about what the blogs are saying about his recent arrest. He don't want to talk about it. He made that clear. He said it on the last episode. He said, don't ask him nothing. He told y'all, don't ask him nothing. So Br <laughs> don't ask him no more. So Briscoe, he's telling Trick, I think it was Briscoe. Briscoe was telling Trick or Chaotic, one of them was telling Trick that, you know, he wants him to take care of himself. I think it was Briscoe because Briscoe said in his confessional that he's familiar with self-medicating and they just, he wants to make sure that Trick is okay. You know, you can tell that they love him and he says, you know, I want you guys to be around. I want you to be around. So I, I found that very, I found that very sweet, right? Like, oh, they got love for Trick. But Trick is, is like, he's set in his ways. He doesn't want to talk about whatever it is that's bothering him. And I do think that, I could be wrong. I do think that his diagnosis of lupus, I just don't think he's accepted it, maybe. He knows that he has it. He says it out of his mouth. But I just don't think that he accepts it, really. Maybe he's having a hard time. And who knows? Maybe some days when he's, when we don't see him on camera, he feels like crap, you know, and he just, it's, it's taking a toll on him. But I do like that. It seems like Briscoe like made the attempt to kind of say like trick, you know, we want you around and I know about self-medicating. So who knows where that will go? But I, I don't know. Trick doesn't strike me as the type that would want to be open and honest. I think that he just wants to live his life and just enjoy every single day here. And 
I understand that, but you know, you do also have people that love and care about you and they want to see you take care of yourself. So I found out last week that Trick is 46. He is only 46 years old. I don't know how I didn't know that. 46. Yo, Trick looks older than my mom. My mother is 62. 62. She doesn't look anywhere near 60 anything. But Trick is 46, y'all. But we love Trick and we wish him nothing but the best. So we move on to Prima Donna. So she is going back to her old hood in Miami, Overtown. So she's going to check out the projects that she lived in because she heard that they're going to be tearing down the neighborhood and tearing down the projects. And she just so happens to run into her old friend, Annie. Now they could have done a better job, you know, making this look a little bit more believable. You know what I mean? Scripting this a little bit better or staging it a little bit better. But anyway, so they go from giving their motivational testimonies about coming from the bottom and somehow MJ's name comes up because Prima Donna said that she saw MJ the other day and his girlfriend, Amara, is real sweet. So I said to myself, here we go. So this Annie lady, she looks very familiar, y'all. Who is this lady? I don't know. She looks real familiar like she was on one of these other reality shows. Who is this girl? Anyway, so this Annie lady, she used to date MJ and she basically helped him with his career. She paid for everything and he didn't want to work. So she ended up having to take care of him. So she feels that he's going to do the same thing to Amara. Now, thanks for the info, Miss Annie. But um, we knew that since episode one of this season. But thanks, girl you know, for confirming what we already knew. So that's where the, the episode ends. So I guess that's going to be the next phase of MJ's storyline. He's a no good, low down, dirty, rotten scoundrel. We, we knew that. So next week, I did get to see the preview for next week. So next week, Prima Donna is going to bring Annie uh, before Amara so that she can basically tell her that MJ ain't no good. Again, Miss Annie lady, thank you for your services, but Mama La Negra is already fulfilling that position. We already know, <laughs> you understand? So, and it looks like the Ratchet Rangers are gonna be hitting the road for their tour and things don't look okay, okay? Things, Bobby Light shows up in his fashions to some bar with no stage. It looks like it's going to be a mess. And I think Alvin is the reason. So, Apparently they hired him as road manager and they did so at their risk. He probably was dirt cheap. That's why. You get what you pay for. So this concludes this episode or review for Love and Hip Hop Miami. Ladies and gentlemen, if you made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you. And could you please do me a favor and hit the like button? Cost you nothing. Also, I want you to get down in the comments because I do want to interact with you guys. If you've seen the episode, tell me what you think. Question. Is Prima Donna out of line for bringing this Miss Annie lady before Amara to tell her about her man MJ? Is Prima Donna out of line or is Prima Donna just trying to help because she probably don't really like MJ and she thinks Amara is sweet? Let me know what you think. Keep it respectful in the comments. I will meet you down in the comments, Royal Family. Until next time, peace.